Hello, Redeemer Fellowship, Pastor Jimmy here, and this week I have the opportunity to bring the midweek message. We'll be continuing on our series on the Apostles' Creed. Uh, previously, Pastor Joe had talked about the miraculous conception of, of Jesus, and so this week we're going to be looking at how Jesus was born of the Virgin Mary. Recently, I've been going through Exodus in my personal devotions, and Exodus 29.45 stuck out to me. It reads like this, I will dwell among the people of Israel, and I will be their God. And so here we have this, this intimate moment where God says, I want, I'm going to dwell among you. I'm going to be with you. I will be in your midst. And the context of this passage is, is the consecration of the priest, is the consecration of the temple. And all the, the tools and, and instruments and, uh, and all the, the dimensions of how everything is, is supposed to be laid out. And it's in the midst of this, you see how there is this, this order to worship. But there's also this sense of these, this priests, these priests are to be consecrated unto me. They are to be holy. They are to be set apart. And they will mediate between me and the people of God. And so he, they lay out these rules for, for the priests, what they, what they are to wear, how, to, how they're to be taken care of, what resources are for them. But we also have this mediator in Moses, where Moses, they would send Moses, say, Moses, you go and talk to God. You go and speak to him and then come and speak to us and let us know what it is that he has for us. And so the priest and, and, and Moses would go and he, he, uh, he would meet with God. And God would write on, on stone the Ten Commandments, and he'd bring it and he'd share it with the people of God. And then the sacrifices and the rituals that would take place in the temple, it would be mediated by these priests that were set apart, consecrated to do this work. But I love that. I will dwell among the people of Israel and be their God. It reminds me of John 1.14. The word became flesh and dwelt among us. Now here we don't, don't need this mediator, this small M, but now we meet this mediator, big M, in Jesus Christ. I mean, 1 Timothy 2.5 says this, for there is one God, and there is one mediator between God and man, or God and men, the man, Christ Jesus. Here we have our real mediator. Here we have our Savior. Here we have the one that can stand in the gap between God and man. And it's not like how uh, there's, there's different views and, and opinions on who can be a mediator. We no longer need the, the, these priests. We don't need Moses. We have Jesus. Or as Pope Francis this past uh, a couple months ago says about Mary, that she is not only the bridge joining us to God, she is much more. She is the road God traveled in order to reach us and the road that we must travel in order to reach him. This is crazy and this is wrong. This is heresy. Is blasphemous. Here there's that belief that Mary herself can mediate between God and man, that she is the bridge, she is the road to reach God. And yet we see in Scripture and we know and believe, for there is one God and there is one mediator between God and men, the man, Christ Jesus. Why is it important that we understand who the real mediator is? It's because Jesus himself died, buried on the third day he rose. We'll be celebrating that here soon. And he ascended and is seated at the right hand of the Father. And he is interceding on our behalf right now. We have a Savior who lives, who knows us, who understands us. Mary is dead and gone away. God had used her for his purpose, to his glory. And we praise God for that. But there is one mediator between God and man, the, Christ, uh, the man Christ Jesus. So why is this important that, that Jesus was born of the Virgin Mary, right? Why is that important to us? Well, it's this idea of, of Jesus having two natures, our belief that he has two natures, not one. In the Cal Council of Chalcedon in 451, there was this belief that was brought forth, this, this belief called uh, monophysite, that Jesus was one nature. He was of one nature, one essence. And so there was this hybrid 
God. There was this hybrid Jesus that that somehow uh, humanity and and his deity intermixed together. But when you mix these together, you you no longer have something that is fully human and something that is fully God. It's tainted. It's no longer the same. And so they uh, they ratified and upheld the belief that Jesus is truly God and truly man. He has two natures, one person. And so why is this important then? Why is it important? Well, Pastor Joe had talked about that, that as, uh, as being conceived by the Holy Spirit, that Jesus himself is the only one that could live the perfect life that we could not that by his perfect obedience, his active obedience on earth, that as he fulfilled the law's demands that we could not, and that he followed the law perfectly on our behalf, and then took on the punishment for uh, for our sins, that it's through him that we are able to be justified by faith. And it's this, but Jesus himself had to be fully human too. Because he had to be our mediator. He had to stand in our place. He had to represent us. He was the last Adam, the second Adam. I mean, Romans 5.15 says this. But the free gift is not like the trespass. For if many died through one's, one man's trespass, much more have the grace of God and the free gift by the grace of that one man, Jesus Christ, abounded for many. And then skipping down, to verse 19. For as by the one man's disobedience, the many were made sinners, so by the one man's obedience, the many will be made righteous. So Jesus being our mediator, Jesus being this perfect and second Adam, he fulfilled the role that Adam was supposed to fulfill as our mediator. Adam as as prophet, as priest, as king, he was a failure. Moses because of sin in his life, was a failure as our mediator. Aaron and the priesthood, they sinned. And they themselves needed to be forgiven for their sins and to make atonement for their own sins. But Jesus himself was able to stand in our place and to represent us, our perfect mediator. And so we have this perfect mediator in Christ. He obeys the law's commands perfectly. He took on our punishment that we deserved, and yet he gives us this reward that is his, this eternal life that he bestows upon us, this righteousness that he imputes upon us, and so that one day we too can have eternal life, that one day we will be with the Father. You see, the road to God is not through Mary, but through Jesus Christ. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. He is the only one and praise him for now he sits at the right hand of the father interceding on our behalf. We not only have a mediator that that sits at the right hand of the father and is interceding, but this mediator, because he is fully God and fully man, he understands our struggles. He understands our temptations. He He hasn't sinned by any means, but he himself understands. And so we can pray knowing that he hears us and that he is with us. And so as we enter this season of of Easter, let us rejoice. Let us rejoice in, in Jesus, our mediator, who as we celebrate, suffered for us, died for us, and was risen that we may come to know Christ, or we may come to be with God, because it says the word became flesh and dwelt among us.